Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out the CR Ferret from Creality. So let's get started. Now I do want to thank Reality for sending this over to me for review and this is one of their more affordable and portable 3D scanners that they have. Now I did review one of their older products before which is the CR Lizard and this I still use a lot. And you're going to hear me compare these two a lot throughout this video because both they are made by Creality, but this is more of the mid-range versus the affordable version. Now, as far as the packaging goes, it comes in a form-fitting case. You know nothing will be jiggling around. Now, on top, you have the scanner itself, and in the middle, you have the tripod battery bank. Then on the right side, you have your cell phone mount, and then on the left, the ferret. You can use this with or without the cell phone. So yes, you can directly connect this to a PC. As far as the zipper pouch goes, it comes with two cables. One that goes directly to your PC, which I think is about four feet long. And the second one, which is a much shorter cable just for the ferret to the phone than the phone to the battery bank. Now, as far as the specs goes on this, you get an accuracy of 0.1 millimeters, a single capture range of 560 by 820 millimeters. And it does have a wide angle mode, so you could actually capture pretty big stuff. And then they have a minimum scanning range of 50 by 50. So also very, very small things. Working distance between 150 to 700 millimeters and a resolution point of 0.16 millimeter. It does have a frame rate of 30 frames per second, which is not too quick. So you gotta go slow on the scans. And it does support outdoor scanning, which they say supports scanning in bright sunlight, which we should kind of edit from bright to ideal because you really need ideal lighting just to get scans working. They do have a visual tracking mode and it does support color. Now, as far as the output format, it does support object, STL, and poly. Overall, the weight of this without the cell phone is about 105 grams, which is not bad at all. Now, so far, it's only compatible with Android and Windows. Uh, Mac OS is coming soon and they don't have an app for iPhone. Now, I tested a couple of objects with this, which is this blow off valve and also this little alligator model. Uh, both using the cell phone and on the PC so you can see the difference, which honestly, I don't see much of a difference between the two. And ideally, I actually like to scan with the phone more than I like using the PC, at least for this setup. So here I'm scanning the blow off valve for my turbo and I had to set it up with two different lighting points. One lighting source I'm using is this little LED, smaller version for a, a corner light. And then I am using this big one for more of a floodlight to get everything captured without shadow. So when I say ideal lighting, I had to use two different light sources just to get the ideal lighting. Technically three because I had another light on top. So three lighting sources just to get the capture correctly. So when you're scanning outdoors, just make sure you have ideal lighting conditions. Shadows is the biggest enemy. Anything that's dark or black is not gonna capture very well. And I'll show you that in a second. Now here's the model of the blow off valve from my phone, which you could see with the textures and the coloring, it looks phenomenal. There was a couple of points where I wasn't able to capture, especially where there were dirty parts on the actual blow off valve itself, where it's actually black. And you can see from this right over here, you can see how dark this is. That's just dirt and it wasn't capturing most of the dirt just because it's black. So when I mean ideal lighting conditions, any type of shadows and everything will affect the scan quality. Now here's the same model that I used using the PC. Again, the only difference that I changed was the slight angle because I didn't have a phone attached to the stand, but otherwise it was able to scan it just as well and it got all the textures and the coloring correct, similar to what I got on my cell phone. Now, as far as a harder object to scan, which is this little alligator figure, on my phone, I was able to capture it as well, but this was a lot harder to capture because there was more textures on it. So I needed to have some sort of ability to spin this extremely slow as it was capturing. Luckily, I was able to find one of my time-lapse timers for my camera, and this spins slow enough to a point where it was able to capture this one full rotation took 15 minutes or so. So yeah, it was pretty good. Even though it takes a while, I was able to capture all the details with this on the cell phone and as well as the laptop. So with a little patience, uh, you can get high quality scans. Now, I most likely will be using this for car parts, uh, mainly maybe scanning a cup holder or something like that if I wanted to design something for that cup holder. 
this is what I would mainly use this for because it is just so much easier to carry than the lizard. While the lizard requires a complete laptop setup, I don't want to carry my laptop and carry this around and make sure if something did scan properly or it didn't. It's just so much easier to watch it through the phone and see if you got the points correct versus using a full laptop and a more expensive scanner to scan the objects in. So ideally it depends on your use case scenario. For me, I am definitely not a 3D designer. I am terrible at 3D designing. I tried to do this donut tutorial and if you know, you know. Um, yeah, that's as far as my extent of 3D that I can go. I could probably model something that is like a box or a little bit more complicated than a box, but that is about it. Anything that has to do with like models like this, yeah, it ain't happening. I ain't gonna scan this, but with the scanner itself, I'm able to at least get the points that I need so I can make a mold out of something, mainly for car parts. Now I can achieve that both with the uh, Creality Lizard and the Ferret itself, but again, this is way much more of a portable option. This fits in your pocket. Uh, you don't have to carry much things and it works off your phone. So if I needed to design specific parts for my car or something specific, I could just bring this over to a friend's house or look at the car that I need, scan it real quick and get the point data that I need. As far as the software goes, you can't do much after the scan. There are a couple of options in there that allows you to um, change the settings around to detect what type of object you're trying to scan, which is wide mode or a face or like detailed high quality mode, like something for a model like this. Those are the only things that you can do. You can't, if you over scan something, you can't just highlight it and delete it similar to the app that you would get for the CR Lizard. So ultimately at the end, after you scan it, you will have to bring it into a modeling program to delete the extra points that you don't need. Sometimes I was scanning objects and I was actually getting the build plate and I would have to delete the build plate later on just to have the selected object. While in the Creality CR Lizard, their software is far superior where you can scan the object in three different angles, merge them together and delete the stuff that you don't need. And in their software, you could have a complete mesh. So this is where I do see where it falls short is the software itself. I wish that the PC software would have used the same software that the Lizard uh, uses, but it doesn't. It's two separate software. Anyway, it really depending on what your needs are, if you are just gonna be scanning objects in front of you where you have a turntable, ideal uh, lighting locations, and you want high quality scans, the Creality Lizard is great. You are also able to do it with the Ferret, but the Lizard is much better at scanning objects in a room. While the more affordable and more portable version, you can take out and about and scan whatever you need. Truthfully, I see myself using the Ferret more than I will use the Lizard, even though I have both the products, just because this is more portable. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. I will leave a link to everything we talked about also down in the description below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.